Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of R Rated as we take a look at WandaVision episode three, now in color. Uh, we've got a bit of a different recording location for uh, a few reasons, uh, one of which is just because it, it matches some things with this episode in terms of uh, in terms of cinematography and uh, the advancing of the story, and also because I can't really record upstairs, but that's neither here nor there. I'm going to try really hard not to nudge the desk that this is currently sitting on. This should be just for this, uh, this one episode uh, before I have a slightly more permanent temporary recording situation. Uh, and if I look like junk, which I do, it's because I'm actually in the midst of recording a different thing that you will hopefully be seeing tomorrow. Um, and it'll make much more sense then. Uh, so yeah, so we're moving on to the third episode of WandaVision, uh, where the first two episodes were sort of based off of sitcoms of the 50s and the 60s, specifically I Love Lucy and Bewitched. This time we're going into the 70s with uh, what appears to be the Partridge Family is kind of what they're going for. Certainly the like opening sequence is very Partridge Family with like a hint of the Brady Bunch to it. Um, everybody's got that 70s style. Uh, it's like that nice, warm earthy kind of a kind of a coloration with most of this stuff um a lot of just like hair down low uh a little bit of disco a little bit of um just that kind of wood paneling -y kind of sweatery sort of i don't know some of the 70s aesthetic is like very comfy to me it's it like it visually it always makes me feel like something is just very old because it is it was at this point upwards of 50 years ago but it also just like there's some kind of warmth to it maybe it's just the literal coloration of everything is just kind of matches with like a warm color temperature sort of deal um but so we open apparently literally the next day after the previous episode where wanda discovered suddenly she was pregnant and uh they've got a doctor who's checking her out uh doctor excuse me dr nielsen uh which is an interesting choice of name uh if you're not familiar the nielsen system i actually don't know the full name of it but uh if you've ever heard of nielsen ratings it's a way to approximate how many people watched a tv show um my understanding of it is that televisions when they're produced will randomly have or not have um you know a a, a something i guess that's that's in the um tv itself they'll call them a nielsen box and basically the idea is it'll anonymously report you know whatever channel you're watching so that they can extrapolate based off of all right how many boxes are in this region or how many boxes do we have out there nationwide versus how many tvs are there nationwide and and it's just a way to take a sample size and just expand that out to decide like oh okay the, about 3.2 million people watched uh america's next dance crew or whatever the fuck the show is uh and so having a having a doctor named dr nielsen is kind of an interesting um reference to that assuming that's what they went for i can't imagine that it wouldn't be like i mean there are people named nielsen we had leslie nielsen the legendary uh comedian but it's it's a it's an it's a it's a name that in a CV, in a series that's based off of like TV and TV history and stuff. Nielsen makes a lot of sense there. Uh, also fitting with the '70s vibe is some fairly blunt sexism out of Doctor Nielsen at the start of the episode. He uh, kind of talks over Wanda at Vision about like I think he says something like. You know, it can be difficult for for them to understand what's going on. So we like to compare it to fruits because fruits are easy. And it's like, oh yeah, right now it's a papaya, but eventually it'll be a honeydew. And like, it's bad. It comes back later too. Um, and let's see. So so we've got that. And and the estimate is that she's about four months pregnant. Um, I think at the end of the last, uh, during the last review I talked about it, and I was like, all right, it's, she seems like she had like five or six, and then I hedged it back down to four or five, so it's about four, so I was a, I was still a little bit aggressive with it, but not that aggressive with it, um, as we'll see in a se as we'll see in a minute, but, so Vision steps outside Dr. Nielsen, who says he's going to be going on vacation to Bermuda this afternoon, like he's about to head home and prep and go, um, as he leaves, Herb see, uh, uh, Vision sees Herb, their next door neighbor working a hedge trimmer, but he's got it like going into the stone wall, like the divider between the two yards and it's cutting right through it, which is interesting. Like it's cutting through it almost as if it were made of like cardboard or, or, you know, 
uh, um, drywall or some kind of like prop stone divider. Uh, so Vision kind of acknowledges this and Herb's like, oh, so I have. And he just kind of keeps going through it. And Vision's just like, uh, right, I'm out of here. Uh, goes back inside and now Wanda is even more pregnant, about six months pregnant at this point. Um, so it's moving very quickly. Like, it's not just, oh, bing, you're pregnant and now that's going to be a recurring plot line. Like, this is happening now kind of deal. Um, so they start talking about baby names and there's – and. Uh, Vision, you know, kind of just decides that it's going to be Billy, but Wanda's like, I like Tommy better. And they kind of have a, it's a, it's a, an adorable kind of back and forth. It's definitely not like a, no, it's going to be Billy. Like it's nothing like that. But, uh, I, I don't know if, cause I think in the comics, Wanda and Vision in, in, I, I, I assume together in one case and separately in another have twins. Like I think every time they have, they have kids in the comics, Anytime there's reboots or reinterpretations, there are like always twins. But I don't know if Billy and Tommy are a reference to any of the names that those kids were given. I don't know much about that, but um, it could just be, you know, here are some names. Or maybe they just like the blue and the green rangers. Who knows? Uh, um, but so uh, they kind of have a little a little debate about that. And she starts having uh, false labor contractions called Braxton Hicks contractions. Uh, and he tries and vision tries to help Wanda kind of like do um, like the Lamaze. I think is Lamaze the actual breathing technique or is Lamaze the class itself? I don't know what it is, but the <laughs> that whole thing, like it's supposed to, I don't know if it's actually meant to do much other than like focus your brain on something else so that you're not as, as like zoned in on it. I, I don't know much about uh, having babies in that regard. Um, so there's that. But yeah, as as this is happening, it's not really working. And stuff in the kitchen starts really freaking out. Um, there starts to be like a lot of stuff bursting and a lot of stuff that's like like lights and appliances and things are going off. So they're like, okay, we have to we have to figure out what's going on with this. Uh and so the the it's around this point where I kind of noticed that something was a little off with this episode and not in the sense that it's like leading into the mystery of the show because in that case you want you want there to be something kind of off you want there to be a little bit of like oh that's weird like herb doing his thing uh outside on the on the stone wall that's something that you actually do want to be feeling kind of off but what i realized was that the cinematography felt a little bit off for this episode and what i mean is for the 50s episode in particular, less for the 60s, but especially the 50s episode, they were very careful to shoot it like a sitcom from the 50s. It was very square up, a little bit of angle to get corners, but you were always on one side of what was whatever was happening. And for this, you were getting full, <coughs> you were getting full, like you were really getting low angles and high angles, and, and essentially they were in like a full, complete four-wall set, um, which you know, did happen a bit in the seventies, but I feel like generally they still wanted to have their live audience if they could. Um, but they would always can laughter if they couldn't. Um, it just, it, it lost a bit of the sincere TV studio vibe that the first two episodes had. Like it wasn't bad or anything. It just, it just kind of took me out of the world that Wanda and vision are in. Now, granted, they kind of have a similar realization in the sense that Wanda mentions like, oh, man, we keep almost getting found out. We got to be careful about this or they're going to learn our secret. And Vision kind of stops for a second. He's like, you're right. They do just about keep finding out all the time. And he mentions uh, Mrs. Hart. Uh, he mentions, um, you know, what just happened in this episode. What's interesting is they skip episode two in their references, which maybe that's just because Vision was like out of it for so much of that. But uh, the fact that they mention Mr. and Mrs. Hart coming to dinner means that the events are still happening, but the context is unimportant in their memories. Cause like basically they, they still went to dinner. They still had dinner together and Mr. Hart still choked and they pulled the steak out and then they left. But the fact that 
the aesthetic of the world they lived in was black and white and 1950s because in the in the previous episode they visibly could tell that the world was changing from black and white to color like they watched it happen so they don't seem to have noticed really that the world has changed from black and white to color or that everyone's gone from a 50s aesthetic to a 70s aesthetic like that's not something that they're retaining but the event of the dinner and the mishaps there are being retained so that's kind of an interesting an interesting thing that's happening there uh and as they kind of realize that something's that they that they keep having these weird hijinks occur i thought it was actually an uh a, a video error like i would like something was wrong with my connection or something because it very abruptly like they do it in the sense that like the shot changes and then like less than a second later we suddenly get a, bl a couple black frames and it jumps back a couple seconds. And at first I was like, "Wow, that was really abrupt." And like it wasn't at all like the previous episode where we get like VCR click, uh rewind effects and sounds and then starting again. This was just kind of very sudden and it and it it what it mostly reminded me of was um if you have a DVD and you hit like a chapter back button, there's probably going to be like a sudden the audio cuts out, the video cuts out and you jump back and you go. Now, obviously, DVDs weren't a thing in the 1970s, but laser discs were. And I don't know a lot about laser discs or how well they could they could uh, track back to previous like uh, segments or chapters. Or if there was a function that laser disc, play laser disc players had that would back up 10, 15 seconds exactly or something, but that's probably what they're going for. It was a little bit weird. It was a little jarring, but they do play out a second version of it where Vision's just like, yeah, it is weird, but you know what? As long as we're together, we can handle anything kind of thing. So, like, I'm starting to wonder, is Vision... So, so there's sort of an overall question of, like, who's really in control of this situation here? Is there an outside force that has Wanda trapped? Does Wanda have herself trapped? Or is there maybe the good guys? There's someone on the good guys side of things that has her, like, contained for some reason? But before, I was kind of assuming that either if Wanda was in control or if Wanda had more control than her captors expected, did she fabricate this version of vision um either in her head or in this reality warped kind of world uh in order to be kind of an emotional like support or crutch or something uh but there's a part of me that wonders if they if it's not if it's somebody else that's like either masquerading or otherwise is like kind of forcing this characterization to her so from her perspective right like so avengers infinity war happens and at the very end of that she you know is forced to pull the mind stone out of uh vision and destroy it which kills vision and then thanos turns time back so that he can ca so he can like pull the mind stone out of him entirely that also kills vision and then moments later like i think literally seconds later the snap happens and wanda gets turned to dust and from her perspective i think from everybody's perspective according to um peter parker uh everybody just kind of comes back like there's no in between time for that five years they just kind of turn to they they don't necessarily know that they turn to dust but they just kind of like Whoa, and now they're in 2023 so wanda just shows up and is ready to fight thanos uh so we have no idea when this takes place compared to Endgame but basically she watched Vision die twice temporarily died herself and could literally days later be in this so she's presumably in like a just colossal amount of grief still uh and just traumatic like handling the trauma of the entirety of the the two battles with Thanos and all of that too like there's a lot to kind of take in there um so there's there's kind of a lot that's happening I, I don't really i don't really know what to make of it just yet um wanda wanda and vision kind of make up a nursery and baby's room and they're talking about that stuff uh and uh they're they're in the living room and there's a point where very suddenly all the, the sprinklers just kind of 
and by sprinklers, I, I thought it was sprinklers at first, like a fire fire extinguishing sprinklers kind of thing, but I guess it was just the pipes um, based on what somebody else says later from their own home. Uh, but as soon as that happens, I, I wrote down in my notes um, sprinklers as a metaphorical water breaking. And then moments later, Wanda just kind of says, Vision, I think my water just broke. And I think Vision is like, mm, yep. Uh, so yeah, advancing very quickly. They have they. This is where they jump to another commercial, and it's the same woman from the first two commercials. So the commercial characters are consistent throughout, and I still don't know whether that means that they're also like prisoners in this thing, whether they are the ones in control or what. But it's the woman uh, in an ad for Hydra Soak soap, um, and the man shows up in kind of a cameo shot as like a. a guy fanning her with like a big like leaf like a palm leaf kind of deal um there's some interesting bits there like he says want to get away and she's <coughs> she looks directly to the camera and says you read my mind uh followed with like an escape to a world all your owns they're dropping still a lot of the like double entendre um lines in here which is which is interesting um so i'm curious if the commercials are almost as good of a hook as anything else right now um so i'm curious to see where where these things go i didn't get a good look there was a there was a box of cereal that was also in the shot uh because it was kind of like a, a housewife that was like frustrated with all of it and it was soap for like a big oh uh, sorry not soap um it was like it was called like bathing powder or something but it's like a bubble bath kind of scrub sort of deal um <coughs> geraldine shows up uh because apparently the pipes burst in her home as well uh and the lights had gone out in uh, Dottie and Phil's house. Uh, so it seems like there's stuff going on around the neighborhood. As Geraldine's coming over looking for a bucket, they have this cute thing where um, where Wanda has herself in like a big coat to hide how pregnant she is. And her contractions are starting as she's in the next room. So the coat keeps changing to a different kind of coat, including a fur coat. She's like, oh, oh. Uh, but eventually she's just like she's just going into full blown labor. Um, there's a whole thing with like a stork that shows up that Wanda tries to like get rid of, but it doesn't work. I that's a very weird moment. Um, and it forms kind of like a distraction theater piece for the episode, which is kind of neat. Um, so that's like a whole thing. But Vision actually runs previously to go and get Dr. Nielsen, who's having car troubles, very specific car troubles uh before coming uh and then running with him on his back uh did he get uh, yeah i think he i think he had him on his back it was either on his back or it was just like doing one of these and holding him but they ran super fast uh and dr nielsen did not like it but they arrive in time after uh wanda finally like gives birth and and geraldine is there to help her out with that and so tommy is born uh some more casual blunt sexism from dr nielsen when he congratulates geraldine on being such a great such a great like help during all this and says like oh you might have what it takes to be a nurse geraldine is not thrilled with that assessment obviously um so they had so vision and geraldine going uh, not vision and geraldine uh geraldine and dr nielsen go to the other room Vision and want to talk, and they kind of spend a moment with Tommy, and then she starts giving birth again, and so Billy is born. So twins, Tommy and Billy. Um, and Vision uh, walks Dr. Nielsen out, and he's like, well, you know, I'm sorry to have delayed you so long. Enjoy your vacation. And he says, no, I don't think I'll – I don't think we'll go on vacation after all. Small towns, so hard to escape, which is kind of a very interesting – so it's like we're getting the the idea that – these other people in the town are all real and are trapped and they don't entirely know that they're trapped, but they kind of get the sensation they are. Uh, oh my God. There's this one hair there. Whoop. Mostly got it. Whatever. Uh, so there's kind of this, there, there's kind of that. Oh, that's so much worse. The, the, uh, there's kind of the sensation that they're all sort of trapped there. And it's actually interesting that, uh, his car was breaking down. He's he when he's there, he's like, "Ah, darn it! Of course, the one day we go on vacation, the the car poops the bed or something like that." And it's a very Truman Show kind of moment where I actually kind of wonder if they're gonna do any references to the Truman Show um, in either the '90s or I guess 2000s. I forget. I think that was a 
I think that was like a that might have been like a 2002 movie or something. But uh, I'm wondering if they're going to do a reference to that when when the time comes. I'm actually going to look this up real quick. 1998. Okay, I thought so. I was like, I think it's late 90s. Not not. All right. Um, but yeah. So to add to this. Uh, the neighbors are kind of having a hush hush conversation also with a really obvious matte painting backdrop. I don't know if that was meant to be a thing in universe since it's supposed to be a giant set, but like, man, the next door neighbor house shot is like really obviously like a flat matte painting. Um, it actually was really uh, jarring when it happened, when I saw that, but, uh, Agnes is talking with her very quietly and eventually vision comes over and they start asking, you know, about is Geraldine here? He's like, yeah, why? And they kind of, they're, they're very suspicious of her is like, yeah, it's, you know, it's just very kind of interesting that, you know, she just sort of showed up one day. Like she's, she's very new. She just kind of showed up. She's got no husband and visions like, well, that's not really, that's not really like, you know, that's, that's not what's, what's wrong with that. And they're like, yeah, but no family no home and and so vision's kind of obviously confused but the implication is that she doesn't live in westview she's somebody from outside or something because she's obviously not homeless like she has enough stuff and clothes and all these things that she that she's doing that like it's not she's not homeless but she doesn't live in westview um and or she doesn't live in the neighborhood and so right as they're about to break herb is about to say like well we're all we're all well we're all and agnes just kind of looks at him is like don't don't do it don't do it and they both just kind of pretend like the conversation never happened and went along their day uh it's a very spooky sort of moment there meanwhile inside geraldine and wanda are chatting about things and wanda and they're like ah twins and wanda's like yeah i had a twin once his name was Pietro. And then he and then she starts singing a Sokovian, presumably lullaby to Tommy and Billy. And it's interesting because as she says Pietro, her her Sokovian accent comes back out a bit again. And then she's singing a Sokovian lullaby. It's the first Sokovian thing that has actually happened in this entire series so far. And as she's singing this lullaby, uh Geraldine looks at her and says, Pietro, he died fighting Ultron, right? And Wanda's rightfully just like, what did you just say? And so now she's like interrogating her about just like, what did you say? And like, oh, I said, twins, it must be really magical. I was like, what did you say about my brother? And so Geraldine is very, very nervous about this. And, um, it, and eventually Wanda's like, who are you? What are you doing here? Who are you? And she doesn't say, won't say. And then she notices she's got this necklace that's got like the sword logo on it. So like now if more sword things are going on here. And so Vision comes back inside after a second and Wanda has disappeared her. And she says, like, oh, she went back home. She had to she had to run along kind of thing. And uh we get this shot of what looks like the outside. It's like the outside perimeter, I guess, of Westview. And you even see a little sign that's like, welcome to Westview, that kind of thing. And through this like warping thing of static out flies Geraldine who lands in the grass. And then all these military vehicles and things show up and we don't really get to see who it is like fbi or shield or i mean it's probably not shield they're very like standard actual american like normal looking vehicles um but she's surrounded by vehicles and people with guns kind of pointed at her and she's just kind of lean back looking up at the sky as we get some daydream believer to close out the episode uh and it's very interesting because it's like it's hard to tell whether geraldine knows what's going on and is bit and is looking up like holy fuck i just blew our cover or if she has no idea what's going on and she's like, what the fuck just happened? And we don't really know what the deal with that is just yet. Um, so I'm, I'm intrigued to see what's happening here. We have in the in the trailer for the whole series, we saw uh, Jimmy Wu, who is an FBI agent in the Ant-Man in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, and I'm curious if I guess the FBI is involved with this, if it's some kind of 
containment thing. Like she could have gone berserk and started really messing stuff up and they had to struggle to contain her. Or I, like, I don't know. Or this could be an entire outside entity and the FBI is trying to figure out how to get in. Or the FBI is still trying to contain her because of the Sokovian Accords. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that could be happening right now, um, and it's still very unclear. So that's I'm intrigued to see what happens there. I'm curious if Sword is a thing that exists as an as an actual American like intelligence or military operation as a counterpart to Shield, since Shield is in, is you know fully. Um, independent non-national i guess um and might be kind of their effort to contain things in the in the u.s or it could be a wing of shield since so shield is kind of sort of back it's the 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 agents of shield series has gone so far into left field that it's really hard to tell what of that strictly counts anymore i guess but uh i don't really know i'm i'm very intrigued to see where the rest of the show is going to go. I, I feel like this is the point where things are going to start to unravel a lot faster. Um, I'm wondering what the 80s, uh, what the 80s sitcom is going to be. Because I feel like the 90s Full House is the obvious one, right? Like, it's the most obvious uh, uh, sitcom you could set in the 90s to the point where, like, satire of 90s sitcoms already do it. Like, um, BoJack Horseman. Um. Uh, God, what even was the name of the show in the show there? Horsing Around, I think, was was a straight up like parody of Full House, uh, with BoJack as the Bob Saget character in that case. Um, and I think I've even seen like a thumbnail that was pre made for. I don't know if it was a if it was someone's like just pet project or if it was an official thing from Marvel, but like it looked like it was like the Full House thing. But for the eighties, I'm less sure. I'm trying to think of sitcoms in the eighties. And all the sitcoms I can think of, I feel like I'm either too early or too late or they're not going to do it. So, like, uh, Married with Children, I think, was the 70s. Um, Three's Company, I think, was the 70s. Uh, maybe Family Matters? Family Matters might have been the 80s. I'll look that one up real quick. Um, Step by Step, I think, was... Yeah, Family Matters was 1989. So, like, maybe... Uh, step by step, I think was the eighties or, or was the nineties rather. Um, and like, yeah, 1991, I don't think they're going to do like the Cosby show for, you know, obvious reasons. And I don't expect that they'll do, I mean, I guess family matters is, I don't know. I, so one possibility could be the facts of life. Though I think that's a seventies one too, isn't it? The Facts of Life. Let me see here. 1979 to 1988. It was mostly an 80s show, but in the same regard, you know, uh, uh, Family Matters was mostly a 90s show. But I don't know, maybe The Facts of Life. If I had to guess one, I'd guess The Facts of Life just because, I don't know, what other what other 80s sitcoms are there? Like they didn't go away. Maybe they just weren't as popular at the at the time, or they had ones that were running for so long from other things. Um, I mean, it's entirely. Oh God, is Alf an '80s sitcom? Oh no, I could see Alf kind of working for that too. Oh God, uh, Barney Miller, Cheers. I don't know why I didn't think of Cheers, but that seems like an odd setting for for that one. Um, wait, Full House starred in the '80s also. Shut up. Started in 1987. Interesting. But it's it feels like a much more 90s one. Married with Children was also 80s. I had that one pegged as a 70s one. Um, That one started in 1987. What? That feels like such an older show. Jeez. There's also Roseanne, which I feel like is too controversial to really to really um, go for at this point. Um, Taxi, Three's Company. Did I look that one up before? Starting seventy seven, went to eighty four. So maybe Three's Company, like Three's Company, feels more of like a quintessential kind of eighties thing. But uh, so that was, those were my guesses. The facts, of, the facts of life, or Three's Company. Um, though Three's Company, the whole idea is too many people living in a house, so that kind of works. 
the facts of life makes more sense for raising kids. I don't know. Sorry for the flashes of like weird colored light. The, uh, the screensaver keeps going off. But anyway, I've been dragging this out for too long. Thank you guys for watching. Leave your comments about episode three, uh, in the, in the comments below. Leave your comments in the comments. That sounds about right. Uh, I'm intrigued to see, I know episode four is already out. I'm going to be putting up a video for that on Wednesday. Uh, and then episode five, I'll be putting one up for Friday. Yeah. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the show as much as I am. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty good. They put on new episodes Fridays on, on Disney plus. So, uh, check that out and we'll see how episode four goes. Bye.